This is section 5, Managing the System. We begin this section by teaching you everything you need to know about your system's services. Next, we will show you how to do some basic troubleshooting of your background services. Then we will show you how to configure journal D to make it persistent. Afterwards, we will give you a brief introduction into the cron system. Then we will show you how you can synchronize files using the rsync tool. Afterwards, we will show you two example scripts, one for taking automated backups of your system and one for monitoring important server infrastructure. We will end this section by introducing you to the Git version control system. Knowing and managing your background services. In this video, we will show you how to work with Linux services using the systemd system. Linux system services are one of the most fundamental concepts of every Linux server. They are programs which run continuously in your server, waiting for external events to process something or do it all the time. Normally, when working with your server, a system user will not notice the existence of such a running service, because it is running as a background process and is therefore not visible. There are many services running all the time on any Linux server. These can be a web server, database, FTP, SSH or printing server, DHCP or LDAP server, to name a few. In this video, we will show you how to manage and work with them. Here follows the demonstration. System control uses the concept of unit files, which can represent Linux services amongst others. To show all available unit files in your system type system control list minus unit minus files. The output will be presented in lesser navigation. First, let's search for the SSH service, which must be running since we are currently using it for this video. The correct name of this system control unit file is called SSH. D dot service. Most standard services on Sender 7 have a D attached to their name, which stands for daemon and which is another name for services in Linux. What you can also see in this output is that the sshd service is enabled, which means this service automatically starts whenever the server starts. Next, let's search for the Apache 2 web server, which on CentOS is called httpd or http daemon. As you see, this cannot be found in the system. So we first need to install it. So as a next step, let's quickly install the HTPD service using the yum package manager. If we again review the available service files, we see that now it is there, but still not enabled. Close the lesser output view using the Q key. Let's get more detailed information about the HTTPD service. Use system controls status option together with the name of the service. As said before, system control uses unit files, but not all of them are service files, which have the extension .service. If you know that you don't have another unit file on your system with the same name, for example httpd, you can skip the extension. As we see in the output, the Apache 2 daemon is currently not running, or in other words, it's inactive and dead. Also again, we see that it is disabled. Next, start the Apache 2 http service and look at its status again to see what's different. As you can see in the changed output, we get some very useful information about the state of our service using system controls status option. First, we can see if the service is running or not. Also, we can see if the service is enabled or disabled. Next, we get a list of all the child processes this service has created. Finally, we get all the latest log messages this service has printed out during execution. System control has a lot of different options, too much to show you here in this video. Let's concentrate on the most useful ones. Type the following command. System control minus T service minus A minus minus state running. This will show all currently running services on this machine. Here we also find our HTTP service we just started. As a general rule for almost if not all configuration file changes you do for running Linux services you need to restart or reload the service in order the changes can take effect. While the Apache service is running, let's change its main service configuration file with the set command to add a minus indexes option that disables the directory website file listings and which is a common measurement to increase the security of your web server. We will learn more about web server security in another video training in this series. First, let's discuss how we can restart our Apache 2 web server service. Restarting is always stopping and then starting your service again. So let's do this. Use system controls stop option. 
then System Controls Start option. Almost all System Control services also support using a Restart option, which will save you exactly one line of typing by executing the Stop and Restart options in the background for you. Stopping a service and then starting again always means that it will be unavailable to use for as long as it takes to shut down the service and execute it again. To avoid the disruption of important services such as the Apache 2 web server, some of them have a reload option, but not every service has this feature. This can be applied instead of the restart option and will reload and apply the services configuration file while the service itself stays online and does not get interrupted during execution. For Apache 2, you can use the following command line, system control reload httpd. Now back to our initial example to get a list of all available system control services. As you see the HTTPD service still is disabled, which means it does not get automatically started when the server starts up. To change this behavior use system controls enable option. Recheck. Now it's enabled. This information can also be seen in the output of system controls status option. If you want to change this behavior later use system controls disable option instead. If you only type system control status without defining a service you get a nice overview of all the running services and their hierarchy in your system. As you see in the output system control always is the first process in CentOS 7 with the PID1 and which starts everything else. If you want to show all unit files one service file depends on you can use system control list minus dependencies minus minus all and the name of the service you are looking for. As you see, the HTTPD service depends not only on other services, but also on targets. Simply said, targets are collections of unit files such as services or other targets. They can be used to create run-level-like environments, which you may know from earlier CentOS versions. As you see in the output, there are also other unit files such as sockets or slices this service depends on. Refer to System Control's beautiful man pages to learn more about it.